All right, what it do? What's popping? All right, um, we're gonna prove this thing, and this thing used to confuse the hell out of me, man. So let's let's see what we can do. Well, we're gonna start off by saying this is the limit. I'm gonna actually multiply this thing times the conjugate, right? And then what does that mean? That means that the cosine of theta minus one times the cosine of theta plus one over. And if I do it to the top, I gotta do it to the bottom as well. So it's the cosine of theta plus one. Okay. Now remember, not remember, but because I don't even remember. Um, we'll multiply this thing out, right? So this times this is cosine squared of theta. Uh, this times this is cosine theta. This times this is negative cosine theta. And this times this is negative one. Well, we see the cosine thetas cancel and we're left with uh, cosine squared theta minus one. And we'll put that in place of um, what we have on top. Okay. So this right here is equal to the limit as theta approaches zero of, we said it was cosine squared theta minus one over the same denominator, okay? Now that still didn't really help us out, but we can do something with this. What can we do with, okay, so this thing right here, what did they used to say? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. I'll subtract one from both sides. I'll subtract the sine squared theta. Right. Well, this goes and I get that cosine squared theta minus one is equal to negative sine squared theta. OK, meaning in place of this, I can put this. OK, so that's what we're going to kind of do. All right. So um, the limit, we said the limit as theta approaches zero. And it's uh, what did we say? It was negative sine squared theta over the same denominator, we had theta times the cosine of theta plus one. Okay. Now, um, that kind of helped, but not really. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to split this joint up. Okay. There's two of these, right? Hence the squared. So I'm going to just split them up. And this is what I mean. Let's bring it up here. This is equal to the limit of, well, the limit as theta approaches zero. And we're going to call this, I'm going to put the sine theta over theta. And then the other one, I'm going to put negative sine theta over this crap right here. What is it? Cosine theta plus one. All right. Now, um, let me, let me read it, right? Cause I don't, I know people be, be tripping when I don't read it. Okay. okay. It says that the the, the rules of the limits or the limit rules, whatever the limit laws, the limit of a product is the product of the limit as long as the limits exist. Okay. So what, what does that mean in, in real people language? That means I, I could split these up and apply the limits of both of them. Right. So this is the limit as theta approaches zero of sine of theta. That looks like a crappy theta over theta. Okay. And then we could say that the limit of theta as it approaches zero is this stuff over here, negative sine theta over the cosine theta plus one. All right, so now um, this one right here is a very, very special, like very special limit, okay? Now this thing right here is equal to one. And I know a lot of y'all are like, well, how does it equal one and how do, you know, no worries. I ha I'm going to put the link in the description. You prove this using geometry, um, the squeeze theorem. You inscribe a circle in a, in an octagon. And I break it down in, in every, you know, step by step by step. And I'll put the link in the description, like I said. But yeah, this thing is equal to one. But now, uh, looking at this part, right, because it's this times this. Well, we're looking at the, the limit as theta approaches zero of negative sine theta over cosine theta plus one. The limit as, as theta approaches zero of sine, well, let's look at sine, right, real quick. Let's see if I still got it. Now, uh, if we say that y is equal to sine of theta, uh, let me see if I still got it. Well, the sine, it, um, what's that? Pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. It starts at zero, it comes up, comes back here, and comes down here. Okay, I might still got it. Okay, so as sine approaches zero, well, this thing is zero. So we could say this is equal to zero. Okay. 
And now we're looking at the limit of the bottom. Okay, so we have y is equal to cosine of theta. Well, let's see, negative 1. Well, oh, it's a power 2 pi, 3 power 2, 2 pi. Well, cosine starts at 1, it goes to 0, it goes down here, it goes up here, and it comes like that. It looks something like that. No? Okay. And as uh, the co the as the as the limit approaches 0, with well, a cosine of theta, this is just 1. So we actually get uh, 2, right? 1 plus 1 is 2 in the denominator, but it really doesn't freaking matter because we have a 0 right here, okay? So this thing right here, we could just say that this is equal to 0, okay? So now we're saying, remember, this is multiplied times this. We're saying 0 times 1, and now we can actually claim. We could say that the limit as theta approaches 0 of the cosine of, cosine of theta minus 1 over theta is equal to 0. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, please leave your comments, concerns, man. Holla at your boy.